In this video, we're going to look at precipitation reactions. And living in San Antonio, you're probably used to seeing something like this, hard water stains. And that happens because our water has a lot of ions dissolved in it, such as calcium and magnesium. Now, imagine that you were doing laundry and your clothes turned out like this with all these ions on them. You would not be very happy. Luckily, our detergent takes care of that. Detergent has this compound in it, sodium carbonate, and what sodium carbonate does, it will dissolve in the sodium and carbonate, and this carbonate will interact with magnesium and calcium to make solid compounds. These solid compounds stay in the water, and so the calcium magnesium ions do not get into your clothes. And this is what's called a per precipitation reaction, where you mix two compounds that are normally um, normally soluble on their own and you make something that's solid. So here is another example of a precipitation reaction where you take soluble potassium iodide and soluble lead nitrate and you pour the two together and you see you'll get an insoluble lead iodine form and the rest of the compounds will remain soluble. And the solid that forms is a precipitant. That's what that is called. Now, just because you mix two things together that are soluble to begin with does not always mean they will always form a solid. Sometimes they will remain in solution, as shown here with potassium iodide and sodium chloride. And so you'll get no reaction. So how do you know if reaction forms? Well, you have to go back to the solubility table in your book and in the previous video to see when you mix something together, do you get a solid or not. So let's look at the procedure for solving precipitation reactions. The first thing you do is you write out the two re uh, reactants that you're mixing together. And uh, you're going to write it like a chemical equation. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to write the formulas of the products. How do you do that? Well, basically you're just swapping ions with each other. So you swap the metals with each other so that the metals are with new nonmetals. Then you look at the solubility table and you ask yourself, is this compound soluble based on the rules I learned? Is this compound soluble based on the rules I learned? Yes or no. If all the products are soluble, you would write no reaction here. However, if they are insoluble, like they are in this case, you'll write the formula of the products. So here we have our solid, and then we have our new aqueous um, product. So you write your equation like you normally would. And lastly, you have to balance the equation. Notice we have a stoichiometric coefficient of 2 in front of KCl because if we did not have that two there, we would have an unbalanced reaction. So always make sure that your reaction is balanced. Also, it is critically important that you have state symbols here. These state symbols are telling other chemists, okay, is this aqueous or is this an actually a solid? And this is big for precipitation reactions. So let's actually do some practice with this. So I have a reaction for you and I want you to determine are we going to make something solid or are we going to have no reaction? So please pause the video, try that, come back when you have an answer. All right, let's look at the answer. So the answer is yes, we are going to make a solid. So when we swap our metals, we're making this chromium uh, carboxylate and we're, that's a solid. While sodium bromide is still aqueous, but we need to balance our equation, so we need to have the two in front of sodium bromide. Now, when we're doing these equations, um, there's different ways we can represent um, all the ions in play. The first way is by molecular equation. And this is what we've been showing um, so on. Uh, rather, this is what we've been showing up to this point where we just show the neutral forms of all the compounds. So this should not be unfamiliar to you. The next type of equation, the way we could represent this, is called the complete ionic equation, where 
instead of having these as compounds, we'll list all the ions present instead. So you see we split up lead nitrate. We split up calcium chloride. However, we do not split up lead chloride. Lead chloride is a solid. So in water, it is going to stay as a solid. While potassium nitrate, aqueous, so when it's put in the water, it will split into different ions. Now, the next thing you got to do is you have to check, are there any ions that are the same on both sides of the equation? That's what this blue line is showing. We have two nitrates on the left side as our reactants and two nitrates on the right side as our products. Therefore, these will actually cancel each other out. If something is found both on a reactant and both as a product, it's canceled out. And there's actually one more, and that's the potassium. We have two potassium as a product, two potassium as a reactant, so they are canceled out. The net ionic equation, you show only the species that have not been canceled out or the ones that actually change. And so if we drop the ions that have been crossed out, we see we have lead plus two chloride makes lead chloride. That is the chemical reaction that is happening in this big equation here. So let's try this out. I have an equation for you. I want you to write the balance complete ionic and net ionic equation for the following reaction. Pause the video, try it out, come back when you have an answer. Alright, let's take a look. So the complete is just separating out all the ions, but remember, water is a liquid, and just like the solids, that is not going to split into ions, so we have to keep water the same. And then we have to cross out things that are the same. So chloride happens in both parts of the equation. Lithium happens in both parts of the equation. When we cancel that out, we're left with H plus plus OH minus makes H2O. That's our net equation. And that is it for this video. See you in the next.